Thank you, ma'am, for giving me the opportunity. A happy Teachers' Day to all my teachers, all my seniors. In our endeavor to make uh, anemia mukt Bharat, we have already heard Dr. Vanna and Dr. Renu, ma'am, talking about the most important causes, 50% of causes with iron deficiency anemia. But we have another 50% which are not due to all these deficiencies. To look into these and to gain insight on, into all these, these causes, uh, I present this presentation today. This is a uh, brief classi uh, classification of the causes of anemia. The most important the nutritional deficiencies which covers the iron deficiency, folic acid, vitamin B12, vitamin A, protein, energy, malnutrition, anemia due to infectious diseases and genetic hemoglobin disorders, the third cause. Uh, Dr. Renu has already discussed on the approach to anemia on the basis of the complete blood count that we see. The MCV values if less than 80 is microcytic anemia. How do we go about? We do the serum iron studies and then depending on the serum iron studies, we see whether it's iron deficiency or thalassemia or due to any other chronic diseases. If it's normocytic, it's because we see the reticulocyte count and then decide the type of anemia. If it is megaloblastic, MCV more than 100, then we see the different causes of megaloblastic. She's already discussed on this. This another uh, mnemonic I found on the net, which is very interesting. How to remember the different causes. The microcytic anemia, if it is microcytic hypochromic, the main majority of causes that we can see are thalassemia, anemia of chronic disease, iron deficiency anemia, due to lead poisoning or sideroblastic. And this mnemonic comes out to be TAILS, T-A-I-L-S. So this, we can remember the causes according to this. Then if it is normocytic, normochromic, and if it is high reticulocyte count, then the different causes do, could be sickle cell anemia, hereditary spherocytosis, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, and enzyme deficiency. The mnemonic comes out to be shape, so it becomes easy to remember. Then if it is low reticulocyte count, the causes could be renal failure, anemia of chronic diseases, myelofibrosis, or cancers. So the mnemonic comes out to be Ram C, Ram Chand. Then if it is macrocytic, mostly it is due to vitamin B12 deficiency, thiamine deficiency, and folate deficiency. Now going to the pathophysiologic classification of anemia. Anemia could be due to blood loss. Blood loss can be acute. It, uh, due to road traffic accidents or as more common with us obstetricians, the PPH. Or could be due to chronic blood loss like a AUB, hemorrhoids, bleed, uh, GI bleeds. Then it could be due to impaired red cell formation. There's a difficult, uh, difficulty in the red cell production. The difficult dif uh, problem with the red cell production could be due to the cytoplasm of the red cell, which could be a deficient heme synthesis because of iron deficiency or a deficient globin synthesis, the thalassemic syndromes. Or could be the nuclear maturation defects which are due to vitamin B12 or folic acid deficiency, the megaloblastic anemias. Then it could be a defect in the stem cell proliferation and differentiation. The causes could be aplastic anemias or the pure red cell aplasias. Then also uh, deficient production could be due to bone marrow failure due to systemic diseases like chronic inflammations, renal disease, nutritional deficiencies and liver disease. Or could be bone marrow infiltration like leukemias, lymphomas, multiple myelomas, or congenital anemia due to sideroblastic anemia, congenital dyserythropoietic anemia. Then the third major cause is due to in de increased destruction of the red cells, which could be due to intracorpuscular defect or the extracorpuscular defect. It, uh, disorders of the red cell interiors, the intracorpuscular could be due to enzyme enzymopathies, the deficiency in the enzymes like G6PD deficiency, defects in the mdan merov pathway, or disorders of the hemoglobin, the hemoglobinopathies which are very important, the sickle cells and the thalassemias. Now coming to the most important as far as the obstetricians is concerned, the thalassemia, also called Cooley's anemia or the Mediterranean anemia. It is an autosomal recessive blood disorder which was originated in Mediterranean region. That is why it is called the Cooley's anemia or Mediterranean anemia. 
it is basically a genetic defect which could be either due to mutation or a deletion in the synthesis of the globin chains that make up the hemoglobin the cause this causes the formation of abnormal hemoglobin molecules thus causing anemia there are two types of thalassemias the alpha thalassemia and the beta thalassemia alpha thalassemia was when there is reduction or absence of alpha chains and beta thalassemia when reduction or absence of the beta chains of hemoglobin thalassemia major or homozygous is the thalassemia when it is also called coolies anemia the alpha thalassemia is the thalassemia when the alpha chains are not there it is a major alpha uh, hemoglobin f which is the major type of fetal hemoglobin because it also contains alpha chains so if there is an absence of alpha chains the uh, ch child is not able to thrive in utero and most like most of the time it is either a, a iud or a hydroxyphetalis incompatible with life so we don't see patients with al alpha thalassemia live patient then the beta thalassemia is primarily due to lack of beta globin chains because but it is because of the free alpha chains which form insoluble aggregates that precipitate within the rbcs and cause damage to the cell membranes to understand the pathology better we have to understand the types of hemoglobins that we have at birth or in intrauterine period we have the two types of hemoglobin the fetal hemoglobin and the hemoglobin adult the fetal hemoglobin is made up of two alpha and two uh, gamma chains which is around 60 to 90% of it while the adult hemoglobin is alpha two alpha and two beta chains forming around 10 to 40% of the hemoglobin while in adult age it is majority of the hemoglobin adult uh, hba alpha 2 and beta 2 chains which is forms more than 95% of the hemoglobin and hemoglobin a2 the alpha 2 and delta 2 chains which is less than 3.5% and fetal hemoglobin is also 1 to 2% so beta thalassemia is an autosomal recessive disorder it is because of a mutation in the beta globin chain on the chromosome chromosome 11 when it is absent or reduced it causes beta thalassemia it could be either a major or a minor or an intermediate minor when the uh, child inherits one of the uh, de de deficient chain from either of the parent and intermediate when it is deficient production the beta chain has uh, there is not an absent but it is producing less of the beta hemoglobin and major when both the beta chains are absent so the child has major type of problem or beta thalassemia major which is a problem with the child to confirm the diagnosis we've already seen either on the blood count that we can have we see the uh, values of the cbc mentors injects indicates that the, it could be the thalassemia however the diagnosis is confirmed by the hemoglobin electrophoresis if the hemoglobin a2 is more than 3.5 percent it indicates a beta thalassemia minor now coming to sickle cell anemia another autosomal recessive genetic blood disorder it is the most common type of hemoglobinopathy when there is substitution of amino acid glutamine on position 6 uh, in, by valine giving rise to an abnormal hemoglobin hemoglobin s the sickle hemoglobin in homozygous individuals whole of the hba is replaced by hemoglobin s it is called sickle cell disease and in heterozygous individuals only 50 percent is replaced called sickle cell trait it is a chronic hemolytic blood disorder characterized by abnormal hemoglobin which under low oxygen tension results in sickling of the cells when hemoglobin s is deoxygenated it forms structures called tectoids which distort the rbc membrane and produce characteristic sickle cells which are destroyed by the reticular endothelial system sickle cells also increase the blood viscosity and tend to reduce the blood flow leading to thrombosis and tissue infarction it is, the clinical manifestations begin after several months around after 6 months of the fetal life after birth because hbf the fetal hemoglobin is a protecting agent against sickling so this this fact is of use in the treatment of sickle cell anemia a drug called hydroxyurea is used for induction of fetal hemoglobin in patients with sickle cell disease 
to, to tide over the sickle cell crisis. The sickle cell crisis in patient can have severe abdominal pain, muscle and joint pain, circulatory collapse, and painless hematuria. The laboratory findings show hemoglobin, which is around 6 to 9 percent. Typical sickle shaped cells are present, and on the HPLC, we see uh, we don't see hemoglobin adult, but see more of hemoglobin, sickle cell hemoglobin. And the reticulocyte count is increased because of hemolysis. To understand why, why should we know about hemoglobinopathies? Because all these are preventable. Hemoglobinopathy is preventable. If we and, uh, test the parents before birth, we, ca we can prevent uh, birth of a child with major problems. It is an autosomal recessive disorder which is carried on from the parents and if a child gets both the abnormal genes, the child has major disease. In India, we have around 1 to 5, 1 to 1.5 in 1 lakh children with beta thalassemia major. And it is our duty as obstetricians to prevent the birth of these thalassemia major children. That is why we should be aware of all the pathology behind hemoglobinopathies. Similarly, sickle cell disease is prevalent mainly in the southern, central and western states of India. HBE is common in the northern eastern states and HBD is seen in Punjab. To prevent hemoglobinopathies, we can have awareness programs in the community, carrier screening programs in the school, pre-marital and pre-conceptual carrier screening, screening pregnant women, that is more important because we see all the antenatal patients and we can get an HPLC done for them to find out whether the, of the carrier status of the female. If she is carrier, the husband has to, the partner has to be tested for the uh, carrier status also. Then if the extended family screening of all the carriers and cases, genetic counseling for all the extended family members, diagnostics have to be there, diagnostic facilities have to be there, and prenatal diagnostic facility at state and the district level is important. Now coming to the second most common form of anemia besides the iron deficiency and is the uh, anemia of chronic diseases. It is associated with wide variety of inflammatory diseases like arthritis, malignancy, inflammatory bowel disease, HIV and other infections. It is also called anemia of inflammation. It is in chronic kidney disease and chronic heart failure. It is basically the reduced renal blood flow which leads to a decreased production of erythropoietin. So because of the decreased erythropoietin, the bone marrow is not able to produce the required amount of red cells that is required. In malignancies, in addition to anemia of inflammation, the cytotoxic drugs that are used are also uh, important to cause anemia. During the pathophysiology of anemia of chronic inflammation is inflammations cause uh, increased re release of interleukin-6 from the macrophages which leads to increased production of hepcidin. Hepcidin, as we've already heard, plays an important role in iron uh, availability. So, when the hepcidin is screened, increased, the iron absorption is decreased, causing anemia. Patients in addition to anemia have the symptoms of the disease that they are carrying because of which they are having anemia also. Now the treatment consists in IV iron therapy plus the, the uh, treatment of the underlying disease that is there. The patients like uh, chronic renal failure patients respond to erythropoietin analogs and toclizumab, the interleukin-6 antagonist has a role in uh, hemoglobin, improving the hemoglobin levels. Then we come to the another important hemolytic anemias. In hemolytic anemias, there's a reduced lifespan of erythropoiet, erythrocytes. So anemia occurs when the rate of destruction of these erythrocytes, which is 120 days, increases the rate of production. Pro patients with chronic anemia, with an acute hemolytic anemia, they usually complain of malaise, fever, abdominal pain, dark urine because of the presence of hemoglobin urea, and jaundice is also there. Patients with chronic anemia have hepatosplenomegaly. Their anemia is usually normochromic and normocystic, as we've already discussed. Now, a broad classification of the different types of hemolytic anemias. It could be congenital, which contains because of the membrane abnormalities, like the hereditary spherocytosis, elliptocytosis, ovalocytosis, or hemoglobinopathies like thalassemia, sickle cell anemia, hemoglobin C and D and red cell enzyme defects like G63D. 
acquired due to, could be due to immune like autoimmune the warm antibody and the cold antibody types or the non immune because of the mechanical like artificial ca cardiac valves burns microangiopathic hemolytic anemia infections drugs and chemicals which can cause hemolytic anemias this is a little busy slide but it explains how the different uh, pathologies are there behind the hemolytic anemias infection triggers immune activation it causes production of abnormal antibodies and immune complexes against the rbc surface antigens and hemoglobin which are bound to the antibodies get destroyed by the reticular endothelial system similarly if there is a defect in the rbc membrane like the hereditary spherocytosis the rbc membranes become weak and they are destroyed easily bile and sickle cell disease and thalassemia because of the abnormal hemoglobin the cells are destroyed easily coming to the autoimmune type of hemolytic anemia it is an extrinsic because of the auto antibodies produced in the body it could be due to warm two types are there warm antibody which are activated when at the normal human body temperature and the cold antibodies which are activated at a lower temperature another is glucose 6 phosphate deficiency in this there is an enzyme uh, deficient g6pd it is an x linked disorder and signs and symptoms are most commonly seen in children and a variety of triggers can cause excessive breakdown of red blood cells resulting in anemia the triggers could be drugs like paracetamol vitamin c vitamin k antibiotics like chloramphenicol ciprofloxacin nitrofurantoin methylene blue nitric oxide and some food products like fava beans so if we know that a patient has g6pd deficiency we should be uh, aware of it and should uh, avoid using these drugs in those patients another condition called hereditary spherocytosis where there is an abnormality of the rbc structural proteins which leads to loss of rbc membrane surface area and this leads to a shortened life span of the red cell it is a common genetic cause of extreme neonatal jaundice coming to another aplastic anemia where there is a general lack of bone marrow activity due to many drugs or due to congenital pro problems it is primarily when it is a disease of unknown origin and secondary due to any uh, drugs or any other chemicals like methotrexate chloramphenicol benzene derivatives infections like viral hepatitis aids pregnancy and irradiation so we have to be aware of all these pathologies besides iron deficiency vitamin b12 and folate deficiency so that we can completely eradicate anemia